Hey everyone, today we're going to go over pairing your FGA trigger with the Westcott Studio Link app. The first thing we're going to do to get our trigger paired with the Westcott Studio Link app is we're going to turn on the Bluetooth mode. So to do that, we're first going to push the sync menu button and hold that down. Once you hold that down, it's going to take you into our menu system. And from there, you're just going to scroll down until you get to the Bluetooth function. Um, go ahead and select that and turn it on. And once you have that turned on, go ahead and hold down the sync menu button again until you get back to the main screen. Once we have our trigger Bluetooth turned on, let's go ahead and open the Westcott Studio Link app. From the main screen of the Westcott Studio Link app, let's go ahead and select FJ Wireless Controls. Now, once you get in there, um, we're going to select the Bluetooth icon in the upper right hand corner. And once we go in there, we're going to select our trigger. Now mine's popped up here, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. Once you have selected uh, your trigger, the Bluetooth icon will turn green on your trigger. So that has happened. So we now have a good connection and we are now paired with our trigger. Now that we have the trigger paired with the Westcott Studio Link app, we want to make sure we have a couple other things set before we dive into the app. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that everything's talking to each other, is we're going to make sure our lights have TTL all on. That is the name of our wireless signal. So if you look here on the FJ400, it's on the main screen and it's on menu number one and it's on. So we'll do the same thing with the FJ200. We'll go in here, wireless is set to TTL. Great. Now the next thing we want to check is just that everything's on the same channel and that it's all talking. So you can see here I have my FJ400 on channel 5, group A, and the FJ200 is on channel 5, group B. Everything is talking. I can go ahead and hit a test button really quick on my trigger and my lights are firing. So everything's talking to each other, so that's good. So now we can dive into the app. Let's talk about some of the main functions of the mobile app. So you can see when you first go in there, there is a big box at the top that says manual control all groups. If this is turned on with the little on switch in the right hand corner, this means that you can change the power of all your lights to the same power. So if we do that now, we can look, uh, we can set everything to, let's go 7.5 and you can see both of my lights went to 7.5. Now, if you don't want that functionality, you can easily just turn off that box and now you can control your lights individually, which is nice. Now let's talk about controlling our lights individually. The nice thing is with my FJ400, I have it in group A. So I can tap on group A here and I can manually change the exposure or the output of my FJ400. So it's at 7.5, let's say it's a little too hot for me, a little too bright. So I'm gonna change it down to, let's go to four. And you can see now my 400 just changed to power level four all from the mobile app, which is super nice. This is really convenient if you're on a set or a studio, instead of having to walk over to the light and change the power, or if you're away from your camera and you're doing a meter reading, this is where this comes in really handy. Not only that, but you can also do a test shot to take your meter reading or just to make sure the lights are firing on the mobile app. So in the bottom of the screen, there's a menu down there or a bar. You can just hit the test button and our lights will fire, which is really nice. Now, there are a couple other additional um, things you can do. So once you tap on group A, a drop down bar will appear. Now the first thing is power, which is what we just changed, but you can also change the mode. So let's say for like a shot, you know, we don't want the FJ400 fire. We can put it in sleep mode. Again, it shows it right on the screen, which is great. Then you also have the ability to select TTL if you are a TTL shooter. So we can select TTL and we're good to go. In this drop down menu, there is also a selection called mask sequence. And that has to do with our mask mode that we have built into the FJ400. The great thing about the mobile app is though, we can expand that uh, capability into other lights like the FJ200, which doesn't have it built in. So what we can do is if we wanna use mask mode, you can go down to the bottom of the screen. There's a bar down there. Go ahead and click mask mode and you're actually gonna turn it off and you're gonna select how many lights that you want to be in your mask mode. So I can select two and in that drop down on group A, I can select which sequence I want this to fire. Do I want it to fire first, second, third, what, what have you. So that's one other fun little feature on there. If you want even more functionality out of a specific group, let's say like group A, which our FJ400 is in, you can click on the arrow that is on the right of that bar, and that'll take you into the individual light. And from there, you have even more functionality. You can go in here and switch modes in this function too. You can put it to sleep, you can enable the modeling bulb, you can change mass, sequency, delay, freeze flash, and you can enable the beep if you want. One other great function of the Westcott Studio Link app is the ability to save a scene. Um, saving scenes is great because if you have a setup that you constantly use all the time and want to recall from memory, you can easily do that. There are two ways to create a scene. The first one is 
click on the scene icon at the bottom of the screen. When you go into there, you can hit add a new scene. Once you do that, it's gonna give you the option to name it. So we're gonna name ours headshot one. So when we do that, we can know that this is always the headshot number one setup that I use. Okay, now I have that saved. Now, anytime that I'm going to set up that specific headshot, when I go into the mobile app, all I do have to do is click that and it'll pull up all the settings I have set on all of my lights, which is great. Now, I told you there was a second way to save a scene. So let's say you're not in headshot scene number one. Let's say you have a new scene. You've created something new and custom. Now, down in the bottom right-hand corner is just a save icon. It does the same thing as going into the scene. It's just a quicker way of doing it. So you can hit save scene and it'll say, hey, what do you want to name your save scene? And we'll call this one headshot two. So once you name that, you are good to go and you have a new scene. Now that we have our scenes saved, you can also add more scenes. There's ability to save several scenes and recall them from memory. That is a quick overview of the Westcott Studio Link app. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.